What is good, health squad? today's video and thank you for clicking on this video if you are a returning subscriber thank you thank you thank you thank you so much for returning and if you are new to this channel welcome my name is Natasha aka naturally Dr. Tash here on YouTube if you have already subscribed don't forget to click on that notification bell so that you can get updated when I upload my videos so let's get to the crux of the video and judging by the title of this video yes you guessed it we are going to be unpacking in another riveting episode of the medical series with me dr tash about the things that you should know before you actually come to study medicine specifically in china because that is where i am at so this video you guys was inspired by people are always asking me a lot of the same questions about how to apply how did you get to china out of all places um, in the world and what do i do if i'm in high school and you know i want to pursue medicine abroad okay so the first thing that i wanted to address is obviously uh, per the title of this video uh is it a scam is studying medicine in china a scam or is it real um you guys it's 100 percent real i mean if it wasn't real i would not be here and i would you know i wouldn't be where i am right now if it was not real and if it was a scam so let's debunk that myth however there are a couple of things that people should take note of um and do research about before pursuing um their medical studies or any studies for that matter um within a foreign country whether you are going to china or you're going to the uk or you're going to I don't know wherever it is in the world that you are going um please always do your research because just like any other place they are opportunists and you know they are scammers uh, people are, are willing to do a whole lot of things to make a quick buck in this video i'm going to be addressing some of the most critical things that you need to know uh before coming to study medicine in china or if you are looking to apply to study medicine in china uh, in the year 2022 the world is in a pandemic so what has changed our borders open how is it going to work what's happening right now how can we do this how can we proceed to do this so I'm gonna be unpacking um, finances I'm gonna be unpacking the system of the school and all of the critical points that will help you make an informed decision before coming to study medicine in China When it comes to studying in China uh, right now, for the intake of 2022, applications are actually open. So yes, um, the Chinese universities are accepting students. Um, however, the bad news is that China really hasn't opened their borders right now. Um, so people cannot physically come to China, right? At this point in time because of the pandemic and they're trying to control that whole situation. Um, so what is going to happen is that, you know, Chinese universities are willing to accept people to their universities in the year 2022. They will be taking students and are currently taking students, um, but students are going to have to undergo an online course um, for the duration of, you know, the autumn and the spring semesters people will be taking online classes you guys until further notice until china says listen you guys can come through and you know study medicine normally abroad so that is what is happening right now um intake is open but for online classes because this is the world we are living in right now this is where we are at that is the immigration plan uh, for the year 2022 Right, 
right so now that i've answered that people have been asking me um so what is the traditional way of applying how do you actually apply to a chinese university how do you actually apply um you know to study medicine or any other course for that matter in china number one just like any other place you can apply online but um the problem you guys is that most of the chinese websites well, the ones that I've seen for most of the medical schools are in Chinese, okay? <laughs> they are in Chinese, so the application process online can sometimes be a little bit tedious and a little bit confusing and you might just end up not knowing what to do. So how I actually came to China, uh, this was approximately about five and a half years ago. Um, I came through an agent, okay? So this is the typical system of how people actually come to China. There are usually agents that are affiliated with a certain university that help people with the application process because they are familiar uh, with the system and they know, you know, the in, in and out of, you know, what you need to do to apply uh, to get into a particular university or how to start the process of, of applying to a particular university. So yes, um, the system in China uh, is predominantly through agents or agencies. Again, with that one, if you do go on the internet, you might find a whole lot of scammers and a whole lot of opportunists that might want to scam people out of a whole lot of money, you know, for something as simple as a JW2 form. Um, and I definitely was a, a victim of that. Uh, when I came to China because I did not know anything. I didn't know anyone um, And I just simply didn't know how to go about it and I almost I almost fell into the trap um, of going through a, An agency that I found on Google, but you know God stepped in really and you know, he saved my behind Okay Fast forward, I later got into contact with an agent that was particularly situated at the school. My process ended up being smooth sailing because of that. I would say that if you are going to apply to a Chinese university, use someone that is already at the school that you want to particularly go to. Get into contact with someone that is already at the university or somebody that knows someone um, at the Chinese university that you want to go to this will help make the process of applying at that school a hundred percent a hundred thousand percent easier than applying through some Random agency on that you found on Google because chances are that could be a scam. So use a contact that is real People are particularly worried about, um, you know, what happens now when I leave China? Can I actually work um, in my home country or like in other parts of the world? Um, or, you know, is it going to be difficult for me to be integrated uh, into, you know, the systems back home? So you guys, this is why I'm addressing accreditation. If you are looking to come to China to study medicine specifically, um, you have to really make your research you guys accreditation is the most important thing that will help you to make an informed decision when it actually comes to choosing a medical school in china because the reality is that china is a very large place okay and there are thousands like thousands of medical schools um in china you know so um, you need to do your research about the actual medical school um, because they in China the, the reality is that not all Chinese universities uh, teach clinical medicine there are some Chinese universities that are teaching people traditional Chinese medicine so you really do not want to end up at a school where you are going to be taught traditional Chinese medicine whereas your goal was to actually come and study clinical medicine which is why research is important so accreditation um how do i know if the school is accredited okay so you can look up the school that you that you want to go to and first of all the school should be accredited 
um, I'd say by three places, three places. Number one is the World Health Organization. Number two, your school should be recognized by the World Directory of Medical Schools. And number three, your school should be recognized by the IMED, which stands for the International Medical Education, Education Directory, the International Medical Education Directory uh, of Schools. So if your particular university for clinical medicine, remember, is accredited by these three places, then you are good to go. And the reason that this is important is that when you graduate from China, a lot of students don't want to work in China, okay, because of the language barrier and all of that, um, you know, speaking Chinese and all that. They really just want to get their degrees and they opt to go work uh, in their home country or go to another country of their choice. If your university is on the list of these three important organizations, it means that you will be eligible to go back home and practice to go back home firstly and write a board exam. If your country, you know, if your country does require you to write a board exam, I know that there are some countries, I think like Rwanda or something like that, if I read correctly, that, you know, don't really require people to write board exams. But mostly countries, like my home country, will require you to write a board exam. America will require you to write a board exam. Canada, all those places will require you to write any kind of board exam to say that you are certified, ready to practice medicine uh, in that particular country. So, so if your school is on uh, these three organization lists, it means you, you are eligible to write the board exams. This includes the USMLE, the PLEB, all other board exams of the country of your choice. And um, I also do need to add that you need to make sure that your school uh, is also accredited at the place that you want to work at. Okay, so your school has to be recognized, obviously, you know, by your own country, if that is where uh, you want to go work at. So those are the most important things to look into when it comes to accreditation. Uh, people are also concerned about the language, right? Because it is China and English is not uh, the first language here. Obviously, Mandarin is the official language or, you know, the recognized official languages. Yes, there are a whole lot of other languages that are spoken in China, but Mandarin is the official language. So what do you need to know when it comes to language, you guys? Um, I think I addressed this in my other videos. If you haven't checked them out, please do go check them out. But language is important um, because number one, you do not want to go to a university um, that is going to teach clinical medicine in Chinese because of the reason that medicine, you guys, it's challenging on its own. Okay, this is we're not playing games here. Like medicine is challenging, um, so you really don't want to have that extra burden of studying medicine. Uh, in a Chinese language. So if you do apply to a medical school, a clinical med medical school, make sure that the university teaches the clinical medicine course in English. Very important. Um, another question that people ask me when it comes to language is that, do I have to learn Chinese um, to be able to study medicine? Okay, so the Chinese, yes, you are going to learn and you are going to learn it uh, throughout your medical course because you are in China. Number two, um, the reason that you learn Chinese is that you can actually have some sort of a language backing, a language backing that will actually back up your medical experience within the hospitals because the, the, the reality is that the patients here don't speak English, right? The doctors will be able to communicate with you in English, but you are going to have to communicate with your patients in Chinese, especially when you start going to the hospital. So yes, you are going to learn, um, you are going to learn Chinese for that reason. And you'll learn Chinese for probably about, you know, four and a half years. Uh, however, the Chinese is split. So you're going to learn Chinese language first, maybe for about two and a half years. And then you're going to have to learn medical Chinese uh, for the remainder of the course that will help to 
build your medical knowledge or medical terms in Chinese so that when you actually go to the hospital, you'll be able to understand what is going on <laughs> in the hospital, especially if you are going to do your internship in China. Another important reason why you are going to have to learn Chinese from your first year is that um, you're going to have to write the HSK exam. So HSK is a very important it's like a um, Chinese proficiency test uh, that is going to be needed. You need it to graduate. Uh, you cannot graduate without writing HSK. I think it's HSK 4 right now um, in, in, in China. So it's very necessary uh, for your degree and for your graduation. The Chinese government wants people to have an HSK certificate. So <laughs> you're going to have to learn Chinese uh, language for that reason. The medical system, the Chinese medical system. Can you compare the Chinese medical system to, let's say, a medical system in South Africa? And the answer is yes, because the Chinese medical system is actually very similar to the British curriculum, okay? So the British curriculum also fo follows the MBBS program, which stands for a Bachelor of Medicine and a Bachelor of Surgery. And yes, an MBBS is equivalent to an MBCHB, um, you know, for countries that are following the UK curriculum, just like South Africa follows the MBCHB UK curriculum. So MBBS and um, MBCHB uh, are equivalent. How the Chinese medical system works, and I think I've spoken about this uh, in in depth in another video but I'll touch on it again is that the Chinese medical system the MBBS program is six years so for foreigners or you know if you're not a Chinese you are going to study the MB MBBS program for six years so it's five years of schooling and one year of internship this internship year um, you you could actually opt to go back home or to a different country and stuff like that but now because of the pandemic um if you are in china just like myself uh in your internship year it's best to stay within china to complete your internship within china because because of the, the movement restrictions and all of that you can't be going in and out of the country and you have to come for graduation and you have to write graduation exams just a whole lot of complications so a lot of uh, medical interns have opted to stay in china to complete uh, their internship. So I don't really know what's gonna happen going forward when they open borders Maybe they will allow people to you know go to countries of their choices again and you know Complete their internship from there, but right for right now. This is what the situation is So yeah, when you are in Rome, sometimes you just have to do what the Romans do in the sixth year of internship the most important thing is that you complete your weeks so i think it's about uh, 48 48 to 52 weeks of clerkship or internship that you have to complete um for you to be able to obviously write your grad exams and then graduate a lot of people don't know but in china but i think this is actually quite standard um in china a pass is 60 percent so if you get a 59 a 58 57 you have failed okay so 60 is a pass and so if you get for example a 59 in an in in an exam you are um eligible to write uh, a makeup exam yeah i think it's what they call a makeup exam and if you fail the makeup exam then sadly you will have to retake your course for the entire year Okay, so the next point that I'm going to touch on is about the semesters. So the Chinese semesters are split into two, right? So the first semester is from September up until December. And um, yep, December, I said December. <laughs> so if you are coming to study medicine here, you guys, uh, forget, forget about holiday season. Okay, there's no such thing as holiday season. There's no such thing as festive season. Um, and also Chinese don't really believe in you know all that Christmas stuff and whatever so chances are you're gonna find yourself studying all throughout uh, December and January right so unfortunately that comes with a package um, the second semester is from 
February up until July. So with the holidays, there are typically two holidays. The first holiday is uh, around about between July and August. And the second holiday is in January. So there are two holidays and the holidays range, you know, could range maybe from about about three to three to five weeks depending um, on the Chinese calendar for that particular year. Tuition. What is the tuition like? Coming to China, you're going to have to keep in mind that there are going to be currency differences. So depending on which country you come from, if you're coming from America or any other, you know, um, what do I want to say? European country, then you're probably lucky. Okay, but maybe if you're coming from an African country, uh, you are going to have some major currency differences, right? So, for example, um, I come from South Africa and the Chinese currency ratio to the South African currency, uh, it's, it's, it's more than double right now. Coming from where I come from, uh, things are a bit more expensive here, right? Uh, because of the currency differences and all of that. Um, the cost of living, though, is... A little low if you're not doing conversion rates so the tuition fees tuition fees um, in China can range anything from 18,000 RMB to about 50,000 RMB depending on which university you choose to go to so I guess it's all about the university and it's all about your pocket at the end of the day um, and you know how much your, your budget is and what you're willing to spend on so my university uh, my tuition fees uh, is 20,500 and that excludes the accommodation that excludes um, and all the other uh, costs like you know the visa and the insurance and obviously you're living expenses scholarships there are a couple of scholarships but the, the reality is that not everyone will get a scholarship so you need to keep that in mind and always have a backup plan for finances when you actually come to China because a lot of people have been in situations uh, where you know they thought they were get, getting in a scholarship and you know they came here and um, they didn't have a plan B so really make sure that you know if you are going to apply from for a scholarship make sure that you do your research on the scholarship that the scholarship is legit and yeah uh, always have a plan B when it comes to finances in China because yes the scholarship might cover your tuition fee if you do get a scholarship the scholarship might cover your tuition fees and it might cover your dormitory fees but it might not cover you know your living expenses you still need to eat you still need to get clothed you still need to buy books um and all those little other things so uh finances are, are a very important aspect when actually moving to another country just make sure that you are prepared and you are informed uh, about the financial aspect of your situation so the next question dr tash what is the teaching like um can the teachers speak english um you know what is what is what is the standard of teaching in china in terms of the curriculum you're gonna get taught everything that you know is taught in any other medical school program so you are you're gonna get taught everything okay from from the non-clinical subject to the clinical subject you, you're gonna get taught everything and um, the courses I you know coming from my experience uh, they do get tougher the more you go up because I think I was particularly lucky uh, because I do come from a science background, having uh, obtained a degree, um, a science degree in my country and having, you know, that, that pre-medical background for me helped me to actually ease through my first, second and third year of medicine. So I've, I've, I really found that to be, you know, a bit of a breeze, but I started seeing flames <laughs> in my fourth year. So yes, um... Courses do get challenging as you get more serious and you move up uh, into medical school, right? So it, it's, you know, medicine is not easy uh, and you do need to do a lot of learning. You do need to be dedicated to your books. You need to have the drive to study, right? So what about the teachers themselves? Um, 
I think I also addressed this in another video. So with the teachers, it depends. You do get really good teachers who can speak English because we really have to remember that you are in a foreign country. There is going to be a language barrier and you're coming to a country predominantly where they medicine, I mean, where English is not their first language, right? Um, so you'd find that there are some doctors who can really express themselves in English. And I find that the more that, you know, um, a teacher can express themselves in English, the more interesting their course gets. And, and obviously, you know, the, the easier it is for the students to grasp the concept of whatever, they, whatever it is that they're trying to teach. However, um, you also do get some of those lecturers who, you know, are intimidated that they are actually teaching like English courses and they cannot um, fully express themselves in English. And that kind of also does create a little bit of a language barrier. And there are quite a, you know, there are quite a few of those. So you do get those teachers that can't express themselves in English. And yeah, sadly, that is the reality of, you know, studying medicine in another country. Uh, you have to keep in mind that there is going to be a bit of a language barrier. But that's not to say that you shouldn't push yourself. That's not to say that you shouldn't learn. And, you know, that's not to say that you shouldn't do your best. Training, you know, what what are practicals? Uh, what are the practicals like? Do you get trained? Uh, what about the hospital? Do you get to go to the hospital? How is it like in the hospital? So, you know, I'm going to be touching um, on these points in this last segment. Right, so let's start with the practicals. Um, particularly coming to this topic, people are gonna, will have different opinions depending on which school you went to in China and stuff like that. So I think if you really do go to a good school, like I said before, you will get taught everything that is taught, you know, in a, a, a medical school anywhere else in the world. Okay. From my experience, we got taught everything, to be honest, we got taught everything. Um, in the practical sessions, I remember us, you know, being taught things like how to do a thoracentesis, how to do a lumbar puncture, a lumbar puncture or like a spinal tap. How do you place an ECG? How do you draw blood from a patient? How, you know, how do you check the vital signs? What are the vital signs of the patient? How do you take the blood pressure of a patient? We got taught all those things. So that is what typically happens in China. You know, if you do go to a good school, they will teach you how to do all those things, but it will not necessarily be on a real person or a real patient. You'll get taught on dolls and, and you will, you know, if you do go to a good school, they will examine you. We, we actually had like practical exams and things like that uh, on, you know, on, on how to how to actually carry out those like procedures. Right. So you if you do go to a good medical school, guys, you you will get taught. So, yes, it's very important to, you know, attend. It's very important to attend your practicals and, and your, your training sessions because that is where, you know, you are going to get taught about all these things. You are going to get taught about, um, you know, suturing, how to, how to suture on a patient, the different technique, techniques of suturing. Uh, we did that. We started learning how to suture, I think, in our fifth year where, you know, they, they taught us how to suture a patient, how you hold the needles and all of that. Um, so you really do get taught just like in any other medical school. It's just that uh, the difference uh, of, of, you know, of I think studying medicine abroad is that the interaction with people, the interaction with, with patients, it's not enough because I, I think that, you know, with studying medicine, uh, you know, in your country, you get exposed to a whole lot more patients. And I think you get to do things earlier, you know, on real patients and not like, you know, uh, and not like on, on medical dolls and stuff like that. Because I found that in China, I had a lot more patient interaction, uh, I'd say maybe from my, from my fifth year and definitely during my internship. Internship, you get to touch patients, you, you get to scrub in the surgeries, you... You get to, you know, um, you get to participate, really. You, you get to, you know, dress the wounds. You get to do uh, these things. But also, 
uh, it will also depend on your interest that is what i find because the doctors here don't really push anybody to do anything so um if you you know if you are going to be doing your internship in china learn as much as you can right get as much patient interaction as you can um be involved ask questions ask 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 the teachers and the professors and and your uh you know your your supervisors to get involved in whatever it is that they're teaching you in you know in that department ask them to show you how to do certain things like things that you need to know because really uh, i find that medicine is really a, a about your interest you know another person's experience of studying medicine is not is not going to be the same as uh, another person another person might say yeah but you know i'm not learning anything but the question is are you asking the doctors do you actually have interest you know in what you're doing are you asking them questions um because they they the doctors in china won't necessarily push you to do anything you know it, it you have to sort of like push yourself you have to sort of like unquote run after them you have to ask them questions you have to show interest and you know you will get those doctors that really do challenge you but then most of them are just so busy that it's like you know um if you don't ask anything if and, and if you don't have interest they're not going to force you to do anything so that is you know when it comes to the hospital situation so yes you do get to go to hospital i think from you know depending on the medical school from your third year onwards but for me i found that patient more patient interaction um was during your your fifth year and definitely during your internship but as for you know learning certain things you do get taught in your practical session you get taught everything and i think another thing that you know you need to remember is that your journey um it's not done after medical school right you're still gonna learn more you're, you're still gonna have to practice you know it's not to say that uh now that you're done with medical school you know everything you're just a student okay you're just a student so give yourself some grace you're still gonna have time to practice you're still gonna have time you know to learn on patients and and be able to do things by yourself it's still gonna be a lot of time to perfect your craft and and stuff like that but just learn as much as you can you know um for the opportunity that you're given for the time that you you are going to your hospital sessions for the time that you're doing your internship just try to absorb as much as you can so yes that is um my two cents and another thing that i like uh when it comes to chinese hospitals is that they have resources they have the technology and all these things and that you might not particularly find in a hospital you know back in africa i hope I have answered your questions um, in this video and you know I hope that you know these points that I've touched on will actually help you to make an informed decision so guys I've come to the end of my video if you do want to contact me you can find me on Instagram I am naturally underscore Dr. Tash 7 on Instagram if you want to follow me and I'm also on Facebook uh, as natasha barache which is my surname don't forget to like this video don't forget to subscribe if you haven't leave your comments down below um i want to know about your experience you know what is your experience with your medical school maybe you're in china maybe you're watching this how's your medical experience been um, maybe you are in high school and you you know you have a, you have questions to ask please leave them down in the commentary section below and you know i will get back to you i do answer every single dm i do answer you know every single comment so don't be afraid to leave them down in the comment section below and don't forget to watch my videos guys run my playlists and stuff like that uh, because there's a whole lot of information especially if you are uh, into this medical related content and you want to know more about studying medicine in china so remember that eating well and living well is a form of self-respect so respect yourself